We now start with our feature, looking at the response from the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, which says it has frozen no fewer than 30 bank accounts operated by illegal loan organizations. Now, by what today, Irikara, the executive vice chairman of the commission, notes that the commission had engaged Google and Apple stores to take down some loan applications from these stores, noting that there were certain processes required for that to happen. He also says that the commission is currently engaged in three major loan companies which businesses have been affected by the commission's raid. Well, joining me now for more on this development story and much more, I have journalist and also founder of Leader Network, Irene David Arinze. Thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast Show this morning, Irene. Thank you, David. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, exactly. Now, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission says it has already frozen no fewer than 30 bank accounts operated uh, by this illegal loan organization. So let's discuss now some of your findings from your investigation of these loan app accounts, uh, the lines of illegality and customers' quest for cheap, easy financial services. Thank you, David, for having me on your program this morning. Yes, uh, indeed, I conducted an investigation which was concluded last year, and some of my findings were quite troubling. Um, one of it being uh, operating without the expected license from the CBN. Uh, thankfully, we were able to get that one of the loan apps accounts being closed. However, we realized that they operated without a license. That was one of the findings. Another was breach of consumer protection regulation by the CBN, of which you find things regarding debt collection, the way in which they were re, um, retrieving the debt from the customers who had you know, collected loans from them. And then the data protection and privacy laws by the Central Bank of Nigeria, as stated in the consumer protection regulation. This was also flouted by most if most of these loan apps um, and then exorbitant interest rates. Now, what we found was that they were also breaking the rules of Google Play Store, which they hosted these apps on. What do I mean by this? When the customers, um, the victims of these loan apps, find the loan applications of Google Play Store, what they see on the platform is not what they find when they download this app on their phones because they start to ask them for immediate access to you know their contacts their images their gallery um, and then very personal and private things on their mobile devices and uh, playing on their weakness which is these people are desperate to get all of these monies they quickly just accept 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 they ask oh can we have access to this they're just accept because it's the money that they want you know so there was also the breach of privacy and funny enough some of these loan apps the one in which i investigated was not nigerian owned i realized that the application was actually set up here, particularly in 2020, February to be precise, when the pandemic really hit. So they knew that um, they were going to lash on to countries where they had low income earners and some people who did not even have a means of livelihood. From my investigation, I saw that the three major countries that got really hit by those loan apps, Nigeria was one of them, Nigeria, India, and Kenya. And you also find that um, these loan apps put their um, their apps on Google Play Store, and Google Play Store has a high penetration in these three countries. So Nigeria was not left out. And then um, the they also, like I rightly said, targeted the low-income earners. So I also found this very troubling. And in terms of your next question, which um, is the quest for easy uh, financial easy financial services, you find that people in the low-income earning ranks um, they may not be able to they may not be able to um, get loans from the traditional banks because they do not in terms of the criteria for accessing loan they may not be they may not um, have what it will take and so they would easily just fall back to these loan apps but then they're also shooting their, themselves in the foot we understand that sometimes when you're going to get tough people may want to take irrational decisions and then that's what we i found during the course of my investigation mm. And we all have to be cautious. But now, to what extent do you also see the country being able to silence this exploitative tendencies in the financial services sector and the growing uh, mistrust within the traditional commercial banks and accessing credit? Because like you mentioned now, interest rates are one of the biggest concerns we have. 
Okay, so regarding this, really, I think the government has already put in place specific um, institutions and commissions to handle this situation. And I, I must say that I was very impressed by um, the response of the FCCPC and NISDA ICPC as well, because my investigation, it, I mean, I like to um, refer to journalists as those who uh, sort of give yeah, we're well, like the feedback mechanism for the society, which is when we when we're done telling the government or the people that this is what is happening, you need to um, mm. come and do something about it. You also should touch lights to them in the direction they should go. So once my investigation was able to lead to the closure of one of these loan apps accounts, the next step was I also um, stated the next um, steps to take. And I was really impressed when the news came out and then I saw that they followed through post my mm. um, investigative report exactly. when it was published. And I, I must recommend, I must use this opportunity to really um, appreciate the efforts of the FCCPC, the ICPC, and then NISDA as well. Mm. Um, However, more needs to be done in terms of the response Definitely. time, uh, in terms of when all of these things, mm. yeah. Please permit me to bot in so, now. Uh, still looking at uh, okay. customer service within the financial sector. We had angry reactions over the weekend. We trill the irregular uh, GT Bank deductions. Some customers had deductions from a range of 1,000 to 20,000 Naira mm. with description of stamp duty, maintenance charges, SMS charges from 2017 to 2019 in multiple simultaneous deductions. What do you make of the lines of communication and the need for banks to cut the response time to customers' complaints such as this? These are hard and monies lost or taken without due explanation. Honestly, um, there's something I like to say. A lack of communication or a breach in communication it gives um, room for assumption. And then when banks go ahead to, you know, take such actions without duly informing their customers, right? It's, it sort of distorts the trust. It's just a natural phenomenon, really. It sort of distorts the trust that the customers have for the banks. And then the next thing you start to see instead of a response, because there was no communication in the first instance, is a reaction, such as the outburst that we saw during the weekend, as well as some people even pulling their funds from the bank. I also tried to reach out to those within the bank. And then, um, I mean, it was not successful, but then I had victims of this particular situation. So I strongly believe that the response time should really be shortened. Sometimes you want to reach um, the, the customer care numbers that you find online, and then it's just that song that keeps playing and playing, and then your credit it, is burning. Exactly. Not in a situation, not, I mean, people are really struggling. So you do not want, you don't want to see that you are on the call, just listening to some some form of music, and then it keeps going on and on for an hour, two hours, where you really want that response. So I think banks can really um, do better uh. in this regard. If we say that we're we are in a technology um, advancing society, then we should see more of this. Response time shouldn't be, shouldn't almost be forever. Exactly. It should be as quick as, you know, a snap, snap of the of finger. A finger really we can't wait mm -hmm. till we get to that point where we have a uh, customer complaint uh, response time shortened definitely these are big issues facing customers and like we always say the customer first thank you so much for I your mean, time on yeah. the breakfast show thank this you. morning irene david arinze it's been a pleasure speaking with you we've been speaking with journalist and founder of the leader network